Oh, I did see you there. Hello there, Blunderheads. Today, I wanted to talk about Ivy, which isn't the first time that I'm doing this, but I think for the first time, I have an algorithm that is the best, most understandable, and really covers the idea of Ivy, which grows towards a light source. That's so cool. So if you look at ivy, you can see that it kind of goes across walls and stuff like this, and it seems to climb with a certain intelligence, knowing where it can sprout its leaves to get maximum sun. So I figure, can we make that like super easily? The answer is yes. So in this video, we are going to explore ivy, and I'm not talking about the medical ivy, no. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, but we are gonna talk about that later. Before we start, I just want to say all the project files, including what we're about to make and also the live action shots can be found on my website, cgmatter.com. Get the files there and let's begin. As promised, this algorithm is super simple and I'm really proud of it. Here's the idea. I want you to imagine that this empty represents a light source. Additionally, we have the growing ivy represented by a single point. I'm gonna scale it down to zero and merge at center. This single point is the seed of the ivy and every iteration it looks for the optimal direction to grow towards the sun. And every iteration it does this, but maybe with a bit of wiggle to reflect the sun moving or some kind of phenomena. And that's it. Every single step, it grows towards the light source. If that light source happens to move, then this ivy will update, correcting for this direction. Let's replicate this behavior in geometry nodes. So make some geo nodes, and to find the direction, this optimal direction towards the sun, we take our target, which has the location that we care about. I'm going to set this to relative, by the way, and the vector is going to be that location minus the original position. And to make sure it represents a direction and not a magnitude, I'm going to normalize this. And now to have it grow, literally all we have to do is extrude the single vertex in the special direction. You can see that we've done it. If I make the growth really tiny, like let's say every single time it goes like 0.15 units, I can take all of this and make it a node group, call it growth, and we just repeat it for a bunch of iteration. Of course, the optimal way to do this looping is we throw it inside of a repeat zone. And now we can grow as much as we want. Now, something to notice is we just got a crash and there's a really good reason for that. Basically, when we grow, our ivy, the number of points duplicates. We go from one to two, and then if we extrude again, it goes from two to four, four to eight powers of two. Very quickly, the amount of geometry blows up. So to control this, we have to grow it, but only in a certain area. In other words, I have a special selection that says where to grow. Initially, that is going to be every single point. And then for future iterations, this should be the only point that grows. This one should be deactivated. So this grows, it's the new spawner, this is deactivated, and so on, so that we have a single spawner on every single iteration. That end point Point is represented by this top value that we pipe to the output and we recursively loop it. We start with a, a single point enabled. That's going to grow. We're going to get our new selection and then it loops over and over. So now when we do our growing, it, you know, reacts super quickly. Of course, it's going to grow in a straight line and then just kind of converge there in this kind of boring way because we included no randomness. It shouldn't just go along this vector, but I'm going to add a bit of a disturbance and then it's going to go this way, trying to find the optimal direction, bit of disturbance that way. How do I do this? Well, I'm just going to use a random vector. We don't need to be too smart about it. Going from negative one to one on the X and Y axis, because we're using two-dimensional space, and I'm going to add this contribution and normalize it. You can see already we get this nice variation, which seems to be pretty good, but it gets most intense towards the uh, light source when it gets there. Why is that? Well, it basically boils down to this thing growing too quickly. I'm just going to make this growth parameter also a parameter, and I'm going to decrease its value to like 0.1. Additionally, as this gets closer and closer, the vector that tells us where to go is getting smaller and smaller, so it's kind of overpowered by this randomness. I'm going to normalize the direction, and the moment we do that, we get something more consistent. So now we have a very kind of constant growth pattern, where I would also like to control kind of the scale of the randomness. And check this out, it automatically grows to wherever it needs to go. If I add another emitter, or in other words, another seed, it creates these extra branches where it grows towards the ivy. This is going to be the basis of our algorithm. The only thing I'm going to do differently is instead of kind of spawning all these points manually, I just want to pick a region where it distributes a bunch of points for me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this single point and delete it, and instead replace it with a plane, which of course has four different growth points. Instead of this, I'm going to distribute points so that it is nice and randomized. You're going to see it doesn't work because this is point data instead of vertex data. Take those points and transform them to vertices, and boom, we have something that is growing. However, it looks kind of insane. 
basically the issue here is the randomization isn't very random. It should change for every single iteration, growing in different directions. How do I do this? I take my random vector and change it every single iteration. Make that a parameter and make that change on every iteration. And all of a sudden we have something nice. And that really is the essence of it. That is the algorithm and the rest of it is making it look good. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Let's get right into the meat of it. Skillshare is a online platform where you can learn things. We're talking courses about digital things, videography, photography process, and you know, post-processing all the way to 3D and Blender and stuff like that. It is a perfect way to commit to actually learning a skill because these courses aren't just, you know, tiny. Oftentimes they're episodic, learn something from first principles all the way down. In particular, one course I want to recommend relevant to this tutorial is Blender, the ultimate medieval scene course by 3D Tutor. And the reason that I recommend this one is there's vegetation in it, specifically how to make trees and stuff like that, which is relevant to here. Learn how to construct a scene, whether that be modeling, lighting, whatever. You can check out that course in particular or anything else. So when you are ready to start learning or spark your creativity, you can use this link below in the description and the first 500 people to do so will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Plenty of time to check things out and that's that's what's up. I beat time. I'm not going to be too precious about this. I'm going to take this mesh and convert it into a curve. We have nice operators we can play with, like trim curve. Something that's going to be very useful is fillet curve, which you want to limit the radius, go to poly, and now you've smoothed out this um, path. Additionally, we can then take it back into a mesh using something like a curved circle as the profile, bring down the resolution, and then bring down the radius until it is nice and thin. Final thing I want to do is I want to randomize the thickness so that this strand isn't the same radius as this strand, and that is literally as easy as setting the curve radius, randomize that value, which you want to connect here. It almost looks correct, but this is actually going to change on a per point basis. So finally, I'm going to evaluate on domain being the spline. This makes it so that each spline acts independently and has its own radius. And literally just like that, we have our IV algorithm. Now this growth pattern makes sense, but it's not too interesting. It's not showing too much intelligence. For example, what if I had a obstacle over here, like a cylinder? Can the IV be intelligent and either grow over it or potentially around it. Yes, and that is the beauty of this algorithm. It is so simple. I'm going to have it grow on every single iteration, and then when it passes this boundary over here, I'm going to take this uh, growth and snap it right back to the outskirts. Effectively, what this means is if I have a point here and it grows this way, I'm going to snap it back to here, where it then kind of grows this way, let's say, and then I snap it back to here. I do it over and over and over again, and it essentially learns very slowly to go around the boundary. Okay, let's implement this in. So every iteration, it is going to grow. And if it's intersecting the cylinder, which by the way, is as easy as checking if when you shoot upwards, it kind of hits this cap over here. In other words, it is under the top of the cylinder, snap back to the nearest position. Ray cast, in other words, shoot a vector upwards on the Z axis on the cylinder. In the case that it is a hit, I'm going to set position for this hit, which you can see isolates the interior sample near a surface of the cylinder. I care about its position specifically. I hook that in to the position. And now it can't grow into the cylinder. But because of the randomization, it will learn to kind of navigate over time. So now you can see it learns to grow around this boundary, fully dynamic, fully dynamic. There we go. We have a super simple algorithm. Now let's make it three dimensional. Really all that involves is we already have this vector that says which way is in the direction of the source, which by the way, I don't know if I showed, you can totally move. That vector is fine, but the randomization vector is only in two dimensions. I'm going to take the Z component, make it go minus one to one, and now it can grow on the surface of things. Let's make our spawner more three-dimensional so that it gets all this like nice variation. Notice, by the way, that none of these uh, ivy points necessarily grow inside of the sphere. The only other thing I would like to institute is I don't want the points to go under the floor like these are over here. If I want to get rid of that possibility, yes, we have it snapping to positions and all of this, but before it does this, I want to take some of the points and move them upwards, but only the ones that are below the z-axis or below z equals zero. Separate x, y, z, where this z coordinate is less than the value zero. In other words, it's on the floor. For that selection, I want to set the position so that the z coordinate is zero. So if it's here, it should map such that the height is zero. Taking this vector and recombining it, x goes to x, y goes to y, but z does not go to z. Z is actually set to zero, and now it can't grow beneath the uh, ground. And check that out. That is our IV growing algorithm. Now with this obstacle, you can see indeed it is trying to avoid it to get to this uh, source. However, now we have this ivy 
kind of growing in midair, which is super strange. So I'm going to put this source way over here. By the way, this is a great way to make lightning, you might have noticed. Well, in that case, we need to define what geometry it can and can't grow on. So I'm going to take this and basically add a ground plane. And I'm going to say, you know, use the same logic as long as the ivy is either touching the floor or this obstacle. And kind of the beauty of this logic is I no longer need to check which ones are intersecting the surface because all of them should be mapping to the surface. I'm going to take this ray cast. I'm going to get rid of it. And literally just with that single cut, we've changed the logic so that it has to grow um, on the surface. And look at that. This is essentially that shot you saw before. Final thing, I want to modify this look because each strand is a single vine. It should have some kind of like offshoots, kind of like supporting things that let it hook into the uh, geometry. To do this, I'm just going to add for every single curve, just kind of slight perturbations, perturbations that follow the same path, but just a bit different. After we turn this into a curve, I'm going to duplicate elements, specifically not these points, although that could be useful to generate leaves, but instead for every single spline, I can make duplicates. I want to take these duplicates and be able to wiggle them a little. Set position with this noise texture over here. They're still single strands because I need to say, let's make this four dimensional for every single strand. So this is the duplicate index, kind of pick a different section of this noise texture. So connect this to the W and immediately it looks like, and we do have visibly three times the number of pads. And first of all, they're kind of going to the up and right. This noise texture goes from zero to one, whereas it should be centered at zero. So I'm going to subtract 0.5. It adds this noise. It looks pretty good. But again, some of it is hovering above the surface. Let's take this uh, noise and make it much, much softer, not by zero, but just by a tiny amount that lets it kind of perturb a little. Row on the surface. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it and I'm going to set position to this nearest surface. And now everything is nice and mapped correctly. Final little tip is that we should mainly have big strands and most of them should be tiny supporting strands. In other words, when this said uh, duplicate index is equal to one, they should be big. And then everything we add onto this should be much smaller. Take this duplicate index. I'm going to check when it is not, I guess, zero. The indexing starts at zero. Well, for this case where it is not the main curve, I'm going to take our random value that determines the radius and I'm going to make it smaller. I'm just going to say make the uh, radius like, I don't know, 20% as thin. I can mix the two possibilities. The first possibility is the normal case where it is index uh, zero. The other case is when it isn't. And for that case, it should get thinner. Let's add our instances back in and see if that works. And yes, it seems to have worked. And that really is the essence of it. It is fully procedural. I can take this kind of like surface that it grows on and just kind of add complexity to it. So you can see it's actually going on this like wall edge, which is just like how it behaves in real life. It grows where it needs to grow. It just is intelligent in a uh, certain sense. The sun, it's blinding. If you want to get this project file and more importantly, all those live action shots, wow, it is bright. Again, you can go to my website and thank you for watching.